Welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd do a five day review of the R9T because this is now my fifth day of riding. I'm off on a long ride into the countryside. So I thought I'd give you a bit more of an informed review after riding it significantly more and just finding out a few little things about it. But before I go on a ride, I'm going to get out my old Bonneville and put the two bikes side by side because it's a great opportunity to compare a more relaxed end of the spectrum modern classic and this, the more aggressive end of the spectrum with the R9T. So here we go. pushing these two around but I wanted to before I go out show you a comparison between the R9T and my 2010 Bonneville and you may not think that's a relative comparison or a relevant comparison but here's the reason I wanted to do it the BMW R9T at the more aggressive end of the modern classic spectrum and my Bonneville definitely at the more relaxed end of the modern classic spectrum so you can see two extremes here and compare and contrast so R9T First off, the ergonomics. I'm six foot one or 185 centimeters and this is how I sit on it. Position of the legs, it's not an overly, overly high seat. It's not that low, but it's not bad at all. Decent enough bend. And position with the handlebars. This is significantly more aggressive than my Bonneville or a T120 or the Interceptor as well. Significantly more weight on the bars. You can go touring on it, you can ride all day on it, it's fine, but it is noticeable, the extra weight, especially if you're commuting in traffic, you start to feel that. Compared to my Bonneville, significantly lower seat. Look at the bend in my legs here with my Bonneville and the position of the handlebars. Honestly, there's absolutely no weight on the handlebars at all. I could, I could just manage it with my fingers, it's so light. So that's... That's a very big difference and it makes the Bonneville easier to manoeuvre and just easier to ride in general. And if I get Monica to come around to the front, I'm going to show you the difference in lean angle because if you're coming from a sports bike, which I know a lot of people do, coming from a sports bike, you may think a bike like the, my Bonneville is selling out a bit too much in terms of losing dynamism. So watch this. This is the lean angle of the R9T, and I'll keep going until I ground it out. That there, I've ground out the bottom of the engine. That's the lean angle. That is a brilliant lean angle. But one thing I would say, I'm just doing it one more time, there. Oh, wait, one more, there we go, that's it. That's the lean angle there, so Monica can get that. It's 221 kilos, this bike. And the way the engine juts out, it, you feel it, it's almost like a pendulum. The weight comes out further, and it, it does, you can feel it, especially if you're commuting at slower speeds, maneuvering around. These do add more weight than probably in reality they actually are. Compared to my Bonneville, it's 205 kilos, so 16 kilos less than the R9T. And this is just all day ease. But get ready, ready for something here, because this, this is a surprisingly bad lean angle. There, ground out already. I'll do it one more time. That, that's all you get from the Bonneville. That's not a good lean angle at all. But because it's so much lower with the handlebars, there's no weight jutting out. It's much, much easier to maneuver my Bonneville. Or the T120, or the T100 or Street Twin. Way easier to maneuver than this BMW. This BMW physically feels more of a beast than that. And two up comfort because my Bonneville is all day long two up comfort. I could tour Europe on this with Monica on the back, panniers on either side, and I would be comfortable with no issues at all. I get off this and it feels like a sofa. And this is how a pillion feels, or looks, on probably just about the most comfortable modern classic. It's all day comfort. Position of my legs, great seat, hold on to that if I want. God, Monica's very, very lucky. This is a beautiful place to be. But the more aggressive end of the spectrum, this is what you're dealing with. If you're going to buy this bike, 
and you're thinking about taking a pillion with you. Okay, here we go. This is what you're up against. It's actually a bit scared. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's what you're up against if you've got an R9T. And Monica always says it, if we go for a ride into London, 15 minutes and that's a max. And I see why, because that's, that's borderline unpleasant actually. And then panniers, look at this, the Bonneville. This, this is a Hepcom Becker, but you can get a whole load of different pannier rails that fit on perfectly. It takes universal ones, it takes specific ones to the Bonneville. Take your pick. Whereas, with the R9T, yeah, I'm sure you can get them, but it's going to be a real struggle finding somewhere to mount that. And mount it comfortably so you don't constantly have to bungee cord it up. It takes 15 minutes or so. And that's it. That, before I head off, is a comparison of what you get, the most relaxed end of the modern classic spectrum, compared to the most aggressive end of the modern classic spectrum. I completely get it. If you're coming from a sports bike, or if you still want the dynamism of a sports bike, this is a way, way more aggressive bike, and it, it has its place without question. And this is significantly less aggressive, but you get the comfort, so it's give and take. But I hope that's been of interest, and I'm gonna head off. Just before I go, quite a few of you in the last video said you wanted to hear the engine sound. A few things to bear in mind. This is a Euro 5 bike, so the absolute latest emissions legislation, this bike's passed. But I do know from previous experience with the Indian Motorcycle Scout Bobber, Euro 5, underwhelming exhaust sound. Also, this is an Akrapovich exhaust. I don't know if it's an aftermarket extra for the R9T over the R9T Pure, but this is an Akrapovich. And listen to this. So, just turn the key to the on position. When you first fire it up, just before I start it, I'll just explain. When you first fire it up, it gives a real thud, and you think, oh wow, here we go, this is gonna be something exciting. Then the exhaust note does dial back after about 10 seconds. It's not the most characterful, even though it's Nekrapovich. I think that's because it's Euro 5, but have a listen, see what you think. going to a place called Ainsford which is country lanes all the way and I'm going to turn off motorways and it's the type of bike oh, yeah, I'm just so excited to just get on the road so I'll give it as much as I can throttle on throttle off attack the corners I'll report back I'll probably meet Monica in a bit for a final rundown and I'll see you in a little bit almost forgot to say the gear I'm wearing this is a Revit jacket I'll put the exact model in a little pop-up somewhere up here but this is a brilliant jacket because it's got the same material as a touring jacket that you'd see, you know, the BMW GS riders or something use. So it's completely windproof, completely waterproof, removable lining, but it's smart and it's also short. So today's about eight degrees. So this is perfect. And I've only had it about three weeks or something. It's got full armor. It's a really impressive jacket. And on the sp smarter end of the kind of sports touring jacket spectrum so i love that and these hood jeans sk11s these are due to be released end of april they're triple a rated jeans so the highest safety rating you can get so when i go out on a spirited ride or something i like to wear these because they've got the the d30 armor this is how they look now d30 armor in the knee and hip and just a well-fitting safe pair of jeans 
these are the Revit boots. Again, I'll put the exact model somewhere popping up, but Revit boots, full protection. Really nice, smart boots. Helmet, the first helmet I got since getting my Bonneville, actually. I've had it about, probably about two years now. Biltwell Gringo S. It's just a really simple, no messing about helmet. There's no extra styling anywhere. It's as simple as it gets. The padding is all removable, so you just chuck it in a normal 40 degree wash. Don't worry if it says hand wash, 40 degree wash, done it loads of times. Great looking budget helmet, but in a cool way. It's 156 pounds, and that's a great way into cool helmet ownership. And Australian company that I wear a lot of their gear off. Blackbird motorcycle wear gloves, very cool stuff. left with the R9T and these are my final thoughts. Let's start with the price. It's £13,150 give or take and that is a huge amount of money, of course it is. The interceptors are way, way under half the price and the T120 is about £10,800 so even over the T120 it's about a grand and a half premium to get this. You can get the pure model which is the more basic version of this for about 11,200 but it's a lot of money for the bike and I spent half my time with this bike thinking it's over engineered it's not needed there's too much power there's too much of everything they've over engineered it for real roads it's not needed but every day that goes by living with this bike you appreciate the build quality the engineering that's gone into it you sit for a coffee in the morning and you just look at it and you, you admire the work and engineering and the quality, the craftsmanship that's gone into it. It's a stunning bike to ride and to own. And I see where the extra money compared to, and talking as a Triumph guy here, compared to the Triumphs, you can see where the extra quality's gone and where the extra money's gone to get that quality. Absolutely you can. So is it worth 
£13,000? Yeah, absolutely. If you've got the money, this is worth £13,000 without question. There are a couple of negatives, and they are only small negatives. The first one is I personally prefer the Triumph gearbox. And the reason I say that is because the Triumph gearbox has a reassuringly solid thud going from neutral down into first gear to let you know you're in first gear. And every single gear is completely crisp on the Triumph. And I've never missed a gear on probably 3,000 miles or so riding Triumph's new lineup of bikes. But on the BMW R9T, I find that going from neutral to first, you don't get that reassuring thud as you go into gear. It's, it's just not quite as confident a change sometimes. And maybe I'm clutching at straws a bit, but I just found the Triumphs a bit more confidence inspiring. The hand lever for the gear change is not the lightest, meaning that if you're commuting in traffic, that's a proper workout on your wrist. I've mentioned before, the pillion comfort is not good and touring it may be difficult getting specific panniers for it because it's very small but apart from that the things that amaze me about this bike the steering and the feel going around the bends it's it's sublime and the only other time i said that about a bike's handling is the triumph street twin it just glides around corners this bike and the slightly more aggressive riding position compared to the Bonneville, it really encourages you to attack the bends, and I absolutely love it. This bike, as a rider's bike, it's, it's almost unbeatable. It's so good. And what I feel like I'm riding here with this bike, and I've, I've never said this about another bike, it feels like I'm riding a future classic when I'm riding this bike. I've never felt it before, it feels that special that even as a brand new bike right now, this feels like a classic already. Well, this will be my last vlog with the R9T and hand on heart, I'm going to miss this bike hugely. But if you've got any questions at all about the bike, just leave a comment below and I'll miss the bike, but I won't have much time to miss it because the next day after giving this back, I'm getting a Harley Davidson live wire and I'm so excited for that because I've got a few big trips planned including trying to figure out how is it living with a live wire and living in a flat how do you charge it how far can you go in a day a lot of exciting stuff coming up for that so subscribe to the channel give this video a like if you can and thanks so much for watching I'll see you in the next one